let's talk about me um, and my areas. I recently, um, I recently had to get an STD test uh, because I was a raging slut for a period of my life uh, that ended last week. And th the good news is that um, my vagina is closed and disease-free and, you know, until, until uh, marriage or until uh, someone takes me out to dinner um, at a restaurant with a gut rating of at least eight out of 30. I'm easy. Okay. Um, no, but... Uh, but what's really scary about getting your, you know, yourself tested and STD tests in general, it, they're just so scary, right? And, and, and so I actually decide to tell my mom about it, right? And, and it's already hard enough to say to your mom, look, lady, I fucked a bunch of dudes and I might be diseased. But to say that in Farsi, you know, in, in, a, in a language where I, I don't know what the word is for sex, nor do I know that there is a word for sex, is all the more radically awkward. Because my mom was like, eh, Negin, why are you scared? Have you had intergender flesh relation? <laughs> yes, lady, I've had intergender. Have you had intergender flesh relation without security of external safety product? <laughs> in general is that we're so closed off about sex and sexual issues that we don't even have the appropriate language to communicate them. I mean, can you imagine uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad doing a public service campaign on safe sex? It would be like, Bew, do, 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 practice safe intergender flesh relation and destroy Israel. Bew, do, 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 do. I have gone to uh, Iran, and I, last time I went, I, I went for my uh, cousin's wedding. And even though we were the same age, I was really, you know, I was concerned about ha hanging out with her, and I was worried that, you know, did I have to censor myself? Did I have to hide from her all the freedoms I enjoy, like boys and alcohol and peaceable assembly, you know? And, and I thought, I felt like, you know, she knew the truth about me. She would consider me some kind of Iranian-American slut whore hooker prostitute, um, which, you know, which in New York we just call a Facebook friend. So, I was, it was, it was a scary time. But, I, you know, the, the thing about Iran, um, uh, people ask me what it's like, and, and, you know, interesting fact is that alcohol is banned because it's an Islamic Republic. So Iran actually, because of that, feels a lot like Prohibition-era United States, right? It's literally the roaring 1320s over there. Um, because people get wasted. Uh, despite the laws, they just do it at the Iranian equivalent of American speakeasies. And speakeasies are the same wherever you go. There's always like, you know, the one dude, Hassan, who runs the joint, he's always like, oh, you better get your rear end over here and pay for that bathtub gin, see? <laughs> you know, and then there's always like that hooligan Youssef who's up to no good, and he's like, ah, oh, jeez, oh, I think you're the business, but I better go move my jalabi before they start the Friday prayer, see? <laughs> with the chador that never stops. And she's like, well, you boys are lucky I don't tell the local imam how splivocated you are. <laughs> and then Hassan's like, oh, you better get that dame out of here. And Yusuf is like, oh, jeez, boss, oh, don't do that. I mean, I think I'm in love. I mean, look at her eyebrows. <laughs> so it's just like, it's just a lot of like, yeah, 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 tree. And that is literally what Iran is like. Thank you guys, it's been really great. Thanks so much.